Down the Avoca River in Thomas Moore's Sweet Vale is the village of Avoca. The name once conjured ideas of mines and minerals, but in the early part of the 20th century, three women changed all that to a worldwide name that spoke of fashion, and high fashion at that. Mary O'Brien was employed by the new Avoca ham weavers in the 1980s and used to run the tour around the facility. I used to love bringing the tours of the Americans, the Germans, the Italians, the French, all around, showing them. And I always started with Avoca hand weavers founded in 1723 and it's Ireland's oldest weaving. But when she would tell them that this fashion name all began with three women who ran the mill for almost 40 years, what was their reaction then? They were absolutely gobsmacked. They couldn't believe that this was started by three spinster ladies, and that's what they were. For over 250 years, there has been weaving on this site. But the mill had been run down in the 1920s until the three sisters living nearby in Tigroni House were offered the chance to take it over. Now the Miss Wins, their father owned, was, oh, they owned a house up there. The father was a clergyman, and he was the clergyman for Castle McAdam, Church of Ireland. And uh, they lived there, and there were three of them, Winifred, uh, Veronica, and Emily. Pat's father worked for the Wins, and they lived in a house at the end of the Wins Drive. Had a garden, maybe about an acre and a half. Winifred, she uh, was a botanist. She spent all her time in the, in, the, in the garden. They made their dyes out of flowers. And uh, I used to go up to her and I'd be weeding it. And uh, they'd show me what they wanted weeded. And they'd say, no, don't pull up this or don't pull up that. And I'd get into it then and I'd, tear, I'd, I'd, I'd do it right, proper, but I wouldn't be tearing up any. She'd be watching you occasionally disturb something. That's how particular they were. All three of the women were highly educated and multilingual. Emily had been trained in lace design, manufacture and sales, and it was she who began to change the product. They bought the wool from the farmers, they dyed it, they dried it, and then they put through the machines and made their own thread. And uh, they were they were very efficient. The three of them were very efficient in what they'd done, and everything they'd done was, had to be done right. Direction and design are by the Mrs. Wynne, who contribute artistic and business talent that has made this one of the most remarkable small industries of the country. The impression we are given of the role of women in the Ireland of the 20s and 30s was one of domestication. Actually, the after-effect of the suffragette movement was beginning to be felt in many areas of Irish society. Oh, successful, very successful, and they were creative ladies. They were uh, before their time, and they were pioneering women, yeah. Blazing a trail for fashion were the three sisters, as owner-managers of their own successful business, and were also part of an arts and crafts industry in Ireland, all successfully devised and managed by women. Muriel Gahan's famous country shop, the trendsetter for the Kilkenny design shop of today, showcased the best of products from the Irish craft houses. The country shop was shown a remarkable assortment of hand-woven tweed goods made by the Avoca hand weavers. For some of these wonderfully fine fabrics, tweed is not and should not be the name. They are feather light and so fine that a whole width of material could be drawn through a small ring. And these feather like tweeds would find their way into the highest fashion houses in Europe just before the war. Since the Avoca Mill came under new management six years ago, its products have gone to the ends of the earth in garments designed by such famous French creators as Chanel and Molyneux. Even the great Madame Schiaparelli herself is one of the Avoca handweavers' best customers. One of the rogues sent it to the, uh, to the Queen for a Christmas present and she got, they got a letter back from her. That was the, not the present Queen, her mother. And... Uh, 
they got a letter back and it was framed. It was here in the handweaver for years and maybe it's in there still. The last one I remember is uh, Miss Winifred. She was quite old and she was always going around with the threads in her hand, looking and comparing to see what colour would go with what. You could see it. You never saw her without it. Uh, that was Winifred. She was wonderful. In, during the Second World War, they made blankets for the British Army. And that, kept, that was a, good, a big thing for them during the war. Now, the war wasn't a great thing, but it was what kept them. But in the, the late 40s, they run out of money. They had sent stuff to the States and they hadn't got the money back for it. And the lads worked for eight weeks for nothing. All the lads, that's how kind of it was a family run thing. And they all, now at that time there was to be, it could have been 70 or 80 people working here. Finally, the story of the women's work seemed destined to end with the death of firstly Emily, then later Veronica and Winifred in 1969. Production eventually stopped in 1973. But when by chance Donald and Hilary Pratt took over in 1974, they would begin a process that would bring the label back to worldwide prominence, even greater than before. But it is the memory of the Wynn sisters who started a fashion name against all the odds that still lives on in the stories told in the mill, where once again the name Avoca is known worldwide for its fashion, style and quality. I suspect the Mrs. Wynn's would have approved. <laughs>